Hey everyone! Today I'd like to do a deep dive on the C-sharp using directive. This is not to be confused with the using statement for disposable objects, which is totally unrelated. I'm talking about the lines like this that are at the top of just about every C-sharp file. The basic using directive takes a namespace and includes the types within that namespace in the current file. You can then use any of those types without having to specify the full namespace path. A very common example of this is system.collections.generic.list. Instead of having to type all of that out every time, you can add using system.collections.generic at the top of the file, and then just refer to list in your code. Before I go further, I'd like to clarify that the using directive is never strictly necessary. The list of namespaces your code has access to is controlled by your project's dependency configuration. If your project has access, you can always type out the entire namespace path to a type. This is called the fully qualified type name. But this is often cumbersome, so most c -sharp programs make use of the using directive. Usually the basic using directive is all you need, but there are several other using features that can come in handy in specific situations. I've put together an example project that demos most of these features. Let's take a look. In the previous example, we were using a namespace from the .NET framework, but from now on, I'll mostly be using namespaces I've defined myself to keep things simple. The example project is centered around a class called UsingTest that is contained within a namespace called main namespace. First, let's demonstrate the basic using directive again. I have a namespace called regular namespace that contains a class called regular class. In my test file, I could refer to this class using its fully qualified type name, regular namespace dot regular class, but instead, let's add using regular namespace to the top of the file. Now we can refer to regular class directly. Note that the regular using directive can only be used to include an entire namespace. You can't include just a single type from the namespace like this. Now let's look at the first special case, the alias feature. I have another namespace called other namespace. It defines a class called name conflict class, but regular namespace also defines a class with the exact same name. If we use both of these namespaces and try to refer to the class using only its name, we get an error because the system can't tell which of the two classes we meant to use. This is where the alias feature comes in. This line looks very similar to a regular using directive, but instead of a namespace, the alias feature takes a fully qualified type name. It then takes that single type and assigns it to the name on the left side of the equals. The alias name will cover up anything else with that name in the file. We're still using regular namespace, so regular namespace dot name conflict class is technically still around, but the alias takes precedence and so name conflict class will always resolve to other namespace dot name conflict class in this file. In this case, we specifically want to use the alias to cover up another class, but the alias name can be anything you want. You can also use an alias to refer to a built-in type. The right side of the equals must be a fully qualified type name, and if it's a generic type like list, you must fill in any type parameters. Next, let's look at the static using directive. Again, it looks deceptively similar to a regular using directive. Like an alias, it takes a fully qualified type name instead of a namespace. It then takes the static members and nested types of that type and adds them directly to the current file. I've defined a separate namespace for the things that we will add with the static using directive. First, we have a class called class for static. It defines a static method, a static string variable, and a nested class. When we add this static using statement, those three items will be added to the test file. This feels very strange to me. We can refer to string from static, static method, and nested class as if they were defined directly in this file. Things get even stranger when we add another class with name conflicts. This second class also defines a method, variable, and class with the same names as the first class members. Back in our test file, we're adding both of them with using static. Even though the two methods have the same name, if they have different parameters, they can be differentiated using method overloading. The variable and the class simply won't compile 
because we're trying to add both of them directly to the test file, and there's no way to resolve the name conflicts. If you get a conflict like this with using static, you'll have to remove one of the using static directives and access that class with a regular using directive on the namespace. Using static also works with enums. This allows you to refer directly to the enum values with no prefix. This can create funny situations like this, where we've added the enum values to the file, but we haven't added the enum itself to the file, so to refer to the enum, we have to use the fully qualified type name. This is just personal opinion, but I'm not really a fan of the using static directive. It makes it hard for me to tell where the things in my files are coming from. I think you could get most of the name shortening with regular using directives and aliases. If you have a good use case for using static, let me know in the comments. At this point, I'd like to draw attention to the scoping of the using directive. Using directives are scoped to the file, meaning that if you have multiple classes in the same file, they will share the same usings. And interestingly, if you have a single class defined across multiple files using the partial keyword, each piece of the class can have a different set of usings. The one exception to file scoping is the global modifier that was added in C-sharp 10. It can be applied to any using directive and makes the directive apply to the entire project instead of just that file. Here I have a global using directive, a global static using directive, and a global alias. Back in our test file, these two classes and this method are being added to the test file by the global using directives. I could see how this could be nice for namespaces and types that you include in almost every file. Microsoft suggests keeping all of your global usings in a single file, and that seems like a good idea to me. And that covers just about everything there is to know about the using directive. The main thing I didn't really grasp until I made this video is that while regular using directives take whole namespaces, aliases and static using directives take just a single class or enum. Check the description for a link to my example code. I would suggest downloading it and playing around with it. I've included additional examples for a few little edge cases that are hard to understand until you see them for yourself. Please like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.